knew, he knew very well. He knew very, very well. Just, let's get into it. Anyways, hello and welcome back to Nelly V. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe, thumbs up, uh, post notifications, all that good jazz or whatever. You know, let's just get right into the tea. Just a couple of things I want to get into that I want to talk about. So, first of all, how you doing? Happy Pride, blah, 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 all these things, right? Okay, so two things I want to touch on, okay? So, first thing, by now, I think I feel like all of us have heard Drake's new album. At least, you you got a sample. You got a sample, right? And I ain't gonna sit up here in front of you. I ain't listened to it from cover to cover, but I've heard enough. And I've, I've observed the opinions the children have spoken, the, the reviews have been made, the TikToks have talked. And um, it seems like it's, it's very split. It seems like it's very split. And I, 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 from what I heard, I'm kind of here for it. It's definitely an evolution of Drake. And from what I can tell, a lot of like the die hard, uh, or like, a, I don't even want to say the die hard, more of like the, the true for real for real fans of Drake. Um, they are not really feeling the album. I mean, some of them are, but they're kind of like, what is this? Da, 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 da. It's, it's giving very, y'all remember when T.I. came out with the, um, uh, remember T.I. came back and he said, you can do whatever you like. I said you can have whatever you. You remember when he came out with that moment, and it was very much obviously for the ladies. It was very different from anything that Ti had ever done. Blah blah blah. Anyways, I just give that example as to say that sometimes these rappers evolve so they can appeal to another audience and, and keep and you know to shake it up. You got to switch it up. You got to keep up. You got to keep up. You got to keep evolving. Right? And then somebody like Drake, this is nothing new for him. He's always kind of morphing. If you listen to him now, even just a couple years ago, and especially him in the beginning, I mean, you got a lot of versions of Drake, but Drake is still Drake at the end of the day. I think we can all agree on that. But anyways, the reason why I'm, I'm specifically talking about this album now is because he knew what he was doing. He very much knew what he was doing. Okay, this is Pride Month. Okay, we know this. And I've noticed it. Some other people have pointed it out. This album sounds very much, it's giving ballroom, it's giving Vogue, it's giving, it's giving very uh, queerness, realness, down boots, baby, okay? And I think that, I mean, it's, it's a, He's such a great musical artist. He's been around for a really long time. I'm sure he obviously has a great team. I don't think it is a coincidence that you put out this album that's, that feels very ballroom. And, and, and when I say ballroom, I mean like, you, like I did my video about Vogue last week, very Vogue, very uh, drag, very realness, walking face you know, duck walk, very, you know what I'm saying? Competition, you know, underground ballroom scene. It's very, it's very, it's giving very underground queerness to me. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I mean by ballroom. So not dancing with the stars. So the reason why I'm like, there, there's no way that, you know, it's like, oh, it's a, it's not a reach because this is all, this is pride month. Y'all get what y'all, y'all picking up what I'm putting down. And I just, you know, it, it's very um strategic. I, I like I'm here for it. Uh, you know, I, I'm an ally of the community, but I think that for a rapper to put out an album that has very essence of that community, I think that there's a huge statement and it is a power move. And it is it's subliminal because I, what I, I like about it is, is that it pays homage to this community that we are celebrating this month. But it's not like so in your face. So therefore people, it, it kind of appeals to everyone. And then you just kind of, then people are kind of like, oh, I didn't even know that this was ballroom music. I didn't even, you're exposing people without scaring people off. And then maybe 
helping to uh, evolve some minds along the way and get people to kind of learn and, and you, you know what I'm saying? Just expand, you know? So I think that it's cute, but also maybe it could be a cash grab. You know, Drake has already appealed to the hetero cis gender straight men. He's already appealed to the hetero cis gender, um, you know, women. He's already appealed to the South. He's appealed to, you know, the, the North, South, East, West Coast. You know what I'm saying? He's already done that. He's appealed to all these different, he's done pop. He's done R&B. You know what I mean? So it only makes sense. He's like, okay, well, what other dollar can I appeal to? Okay, let's appeal to the gay dollar. You know, he did it. He kind of, he kind of hinted at it. If you think about it, he hinted at it when he came out with kind of like this bounce influence music. When he came out with Kiki, do you love me? And you're running. You know, that's very much that was you know with Big Frida and these things. That's bounce music. Bounce music to me. Um, it's very reminiscent of ballroom too, but that's another conversation for a, a, another day. I'm not going to get into all of that, but I'm just saying, you know, he, he started doing the, the bounce music and the stuff and, and bounce music is very, you know, Louisiana, but it, it can also be, it can also go very queer. You know, the gays love to twerk. They love to do all the woo, 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 so it's not a part I, I like I see what you're doing Drake I see you you ain't slick and I and I think it's cool I, I, I like that my man always switching it up so if you haven't listened to honestly never mind which is the name of the album check it out let me know what your favorite song is and then this last thing that I want to touch on is um I went to go see the little Buzz Lightyear movie uh called Lightyear you know Buzz Lightyear Toy Story right and you know it didn't do very well now i think a part of it why the, it didn't do well is because uh my man tim allen didn't do the voice so i think that people were like How, why are you changing the now the person that they got to do the voice did great and you know it wasn't necessarily buzz as a toy so it makes sense that the voice was different and you could kind of live with now who's buzz the toy you know you know, look, they did a good job, but it would have been nice to just have the same voice. You know what I mean? So I think that that has something to do with it. But then a lot of people were upset. Like, people couldn't get past it. Okay, there is representation of LGBT, representation in the movie, which obviously makes sense. It came out of Pride Month. But it's not like a major storyline. It just so happened that one of the characters just so happens to be... LGBT. I don't know. They they didn't even specify if if this person identified as a lesbian or transgender or non about you you know you they didn't specify what that person identified as and and it was like I said it wasn't a storyline but this person uh, did have a same sex relationship. They showed where they they got married and there there was this brief one second part where uh the i'm gonna say the woman gave her wife a, just a peck on the lips and it was really quick it wasn't like this overly sexualized thing it wasn't anything weird uh, but a lot of parents were you know weary of that and, and i guess you know we still live in a world where people are still very intolerant and even just that one just that representation of the same-sex couple who who they showed her and had a son who grew up uh and had a, a um a husband so they raised a gay son who married you know and so like i said it wasn't a major storyline but it, i guess maybe it was enough to turn people off and i'm just like really we're just gonna it's 2022 you know i i, I you know i I mean, to each his own, each parents can decide what they, uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought that the movie, uh, it was good. It was a little long for a kid's movie. That's only my, really my main critique, but all in all, I recommend it. I mean, go see it. Is it something that I'm like, oh, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a Frozen for me. It's not a high school musical for me, but it was good and I recommend it. It was funny. 
I like the little cat and little socks. Socks, socks saved the show. Kiki Palmer did uh, uh, one of the voices of the character. She did a great job. She did a great job. I was here for it. I lived. Anyways, that's all that I wanted to talk about today. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you've seen the Lightyear movie, let me know what you think. If you've heard Drake's new album, honestly, never mind. Let me know what you think. What are your favorite songs? Did you did you catch the ballroom, you know, references? You know, as far as the beat and the vibes and the ta 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 boom the cat 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 cat. You know, did we get that? Anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. Bye. Oh, before I go, also, uh, keep your uh, follow me on my socials so that you know when the podcast is coming back. Both seasons are fully up and still up and streaming, so now's the time to catch up on the pod. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for watching.